Well, hello and welcome back here to Everlasting Summer. Now, in the last episode, we got ourselves lost in the tunnels with the lovely Lena looking for Shurik, and finally found our way back to the camp, only to find that he was here laying asleep on one of the benches, and we're just about to give him a piece of our mind. Not a large pace, I hope, because I'm not entirely certain we have that much to spare. I jumped up, walked quickly to the bench he was sleeping on, and slapped him. Ouch! He woke up at once. What the hell? What are you doing, you bastard? What? Shurik stared at me with a scared and, moreover, sane look. What was that all about down there? What? Where? In the dungeon. In the mine. In the bomb shelter. Did you go completely nuts? I don't understand you. He looked around. Why am I here? And where should you be, in your opinion? No, wait, I know. You should be in an asylum. I went to the old camp in the morning for spare parts, and then... Don't you remember anything after that? Lena asked after walking up to us. Yes, and I... Uh, don't pretend. I said calmly and sat next to him. It really looked like he wasn't lying, though. I don't understand anything. It's unscientific. Who cares? Don't think that I trust you. Mary lost can't occur, just... Sherrick talked to himself, mumbling something, not paying any of uh, us any attention. Let's go, Lena said quietly. Should we just leave him here? He's not in his right mind. He has to sleep. It's dangerous to leave this psycho alone. He may strangle Electronic with an induction coil in the night. It's going to be all right, trust me. Besides, I think Electronic would like it. I had no reason not to trust her, or to doubt her. However, I didn't have any reason to trust her either. On the other hand, who cares now? I wanted to fall asleep as quickly as possible. Okay. We left Shurik, who was still mumbling something to himself. We're here. What? Where? I have to go further on. Lena smiled. I hadn't thought about anything all the way here, just followed her, and hadn't noticed that we'd come to Olga's cabin. Yes. Thank you. For today. There's nothing to thank me for. It's just good that we came back here alive. We'll see that what Shurik has to say tomorrow. Thanks, anyway. She said mysteriously and averted her eyes. You're welcome. Well, it's time for me to go. Lena quickly turned around and walked quickly in the direction of her cabin. I suddenly had a thought that something was about to go a bit off. Not quite right. After all that's happened, just... Well, it's time for me to go. It usually goes differently in such situations, doesn't it? I have no idea what I expected, though. Exhaustion hit me again. Walking with difficulty, I entered the cabin. The leader was sitting on my bed, unfortunately clothed. Simeon, she started to talk sadly. Where have you been? Well, I... Prepared for a scolding, I didn't expect that reaction. I went to look for Shurik. Alone? Oh, okay. I think... I don't want to get Lena into trouble. Let's be the gentleman and shoulder the blame. I'll tell her that we went alone. Yes, alone. So, what about Shurik? It looks like Olga was really worried about the fate of her lost pioneer. What's so strange about that? Uh, the leader can treat her work lightly, but it doesn't mean that she's a heartless person. He's okay. As okay as he could be in such a situation. That's good. Go to sleep now. Fine, but could you get off my bed first? 
She turned the light out quickly, showing that the conversation is over, and I couldn't ask anything. Though should I? Ask why she didn't scold me? Still, Lena. What happened today? My thoughts slowed their pace before stopping completely. I'm a teenage boy thinking about a girl. What do you expect? Day 5 We ran. Ran with the last of our strength. Like those who run for their precious lives. Like a doomed person, knowing there is no hope to save his life, we still fight the inevitable and his own fate. I barely managed to close the heavy metal door behind me. I had no idea how deep this bomb shelter is, or if it's able to withstand a nuclear blast, but we still have no other place to hide. She gripped my hand tight. Don't be afraid. Bits of the ceiling were falling and the walls were shaking. I was prepared for the worst. But death is the kind of thing that you can't ever be prepared for. But suddenly, complete silence fell. It rang even louder than the explosions. Maybe it's time to say goodbye. She was whimpering. I wanted to comfort her somehow, but realized there was nothing I could do. Yes. You know, I... A horrible bang almost split my eardrums. It seems that I'm under a piece of collapsed ceiling, but I don't feel any pain. All I want is to not let her go. I woke up in a cold sweat, short of breath and gasping for air. It took me some time to come to my senses. It was a dream. It was just a dream. My questioning mind, however, refused to believe it. But who was that girl with me there? I didn't want to let go of her hand so desperately. Sadly, I couldn't recall her at all. The clock was showing a few minutes past ten. I slowly came to my senses as reality started to shake out its claim on my mind and my stomach foully growled. All right, war is war, but lunch should be served in due time. It turned out that Olga wasn't here. She must have decided not to wake me up. Well, thanks go to our camp leader for this. After yesterday's adventures, I had to have some rest. Last night, last night remained a blurry memory which I really didn't want to think about. It's now more important to find something to eat and to wash myself. Exactly, though I'm still scared to go back to the washing area. Because a pioneer must always be clean and tidy, and slightly afraid of electronic. Though I would agree with this principle even if I wasn't a pioneer. As a matter of fact, I'm not. On my way to the washman's, I met my worst nightmare. He started to wave his hands and ran up to me. Hello, good morning. Thank you for finding Shurik. Without him, I don't even... It's nothing. I was a bit embarrassed. No, really, don't be shy. The country must be proud of its heroes. And what about Shurik? How did he look this morning? Is he alright? After yesterday's craziness, I thought such a question was completely valid. Oh yes, absolutely. Absolutely scrummy. The only thing is, he can't remember anything. Can't he? I wasn't surprised at all. He says that he went to the abandoned camp yesterday, and then woke up in his bed in the morning. I mean, he remembers nothing between those two events. I see. All right, then. You missed breakfast, right? Come to our club. We'll feed you. I have something special. Look, it's here in my trousers. Electronic smiled in a conspiratorial way. Thanks. I'll come. Probably. I had to wash myself first anyway. We'll be waiting. He waved at me and left to carry out his own business. There was nobody near the washstands. The water turned out surprisingly warm today. 
it's been warmed up already, I guess. Having my face washed, I realised that it wouldn't be easy to wash the rest of my body here. Maybe I should go to the showers. But since there is nobody here... I turned the tap in such a way as the water streamed parallel to the ground and started to take off my clothes. And what if somebody sees me? Well, I'll rinse and dry myself quickly and put on my clothes. The water, which seemed warm in my hands and face, felt bone-chillingly cold on my body. The whole washing process took no longer than ten seconds, and I started to wipe myself quickly afterwards. I turned round and noticed all the girls were standing there. In fact, Yolana was selling tickets. But I didn't manage to finish anyway. There were voices coming in the direction of the footpath. The only solution came to me in a split second. I grabbed my clothes and dashed into the bushes. Oh, this is not going to end well. A moment later, Alisa and Yolana appeared near the washstands. You could have done it by yourself. Why did you bring me here? Is it such a big deal for you? Fine, let me. I peered at them and noticed they were both covered in red paint. What a surprise. I wonder how they managed that. Alyssa opened the valve and started to rub Yolanda's back. Take off your bra. What if somebody sees us? What? Is there anything to see? She grinned. Okay. Just be quick. It was true that there wasn't much to look at, but even so, I stared at the girls narrowly. <laughs> I stared at her rather narrowly as well. Uh, it was a pity that they were standing with their backs to me. A minute later, Elisa managed to wash off all the paint. I'm done! Thanks. You're welcome. Elisa replied lazily. Listen, let me try on yours. She pointed to Elisa's bra. It won't fit you for sure. Well, I'd like to try anyway. But out here, there's nobody here, right? Yelana looked my way and smiled archly. I was absolutely sure she couldn't see me in these bushes, but... Enough with this nonsense. Yelana wasn't listening to her anymore and grabbed Alyssa's bra with a dexterous move instead. Now I have to confess... I had something to look at. I watched the two girls chase one another around the washstands with bated breath. Alyssa's, Alyssa covered her breast with her hands so I could barely see anything at all. I leaned forward and stumbled over a stone, falling out of the bushes. Alyssa and Yolanda stood frozen, staring at me. I tried to cover my nudity with a guilty face and my hands. The tableau lasted for a few seconds. Then Alyssa took her shirt and somehow put it on in an instant. You! You! Her face had gone from red to purple. It looked like she would explode in a nuclear blast any second. The only thing I wanted was to dis disintegrate into atoms and get as far from the epicenter as possible. He was sitting there the whole time. So she noticed me then. You! You! And I? Well, I accidentally, if you know what I mean. Alyssa rushed at me. Covering my butt with one hand and holding my clothes with the other, I ran in the woods. It seemed like the best solution to me at the time, as showing up naked in the middle of the camp, accompanied by two screaming girls, wasn't a good idea. I ran without looking back, and stopped a few minutes later to catch my breath. It seemed there was no pursuit, so I managed to save myself, but at the cost of lacerated, scratched and bleeding feet, as I had no time to put on my boots, I sat on a seat tree stump and sighed. Sometime later, having dressed already, I left the forest. I need to decide what to do next. My feet are hurting, so I should go straight to the infirmary. But on the other hand, my stomach isn't going to wait either. Maybe I should accept Electronic's invitation. Or head to the canteen in hope of finding something left to eat there. Oh, choice time. Choice time. Infirmary, possibly kitchen. 
don't think I really want to go to the clubhouse. Um, but uh, let's go to the kitchen. I always took good care of my health. And even better care at the moments when I couldn't bear it anymore. And now I was able to walk and my feet weren't even hurting much. So my feet will heal up eventually while hunger drives the wolf from the wood. Surely the pioneers didn't finish everything. At least a couple of sausages, eggs, or in the worst case a few pieces of bread should be left. It was so deserted and quiet around the canteen that I even hesitated for a second. Isn't it here where every pioneer seeks his happiness three times a day, and some even more often? Isn't it the anoasis of this heated summer desert? Isn't it a secret chemical lab studying how many types of meals unknown to science affect immature teenage bodies? Now this building looks more like a bastion abandoned by its defenders, a kind of La Rochelle left by the Huguenots. Just to get in, just get in and the ghosts of warriors who accepted a heroic death here will surround you. The canteen looked the way it always did though. It was just completely empty except for Miku, who was cleaning a table. Seeing that I quickly turned round and tried to seeing that I quickly turned around and tried to sneakily escape. But I didn't manage to make it. Hey, Simeon, did you come here to eat? You missed breakfast, didn't you? I mean I didn't see you. You could have been here, but I, I didn't see you. Is it it's good that you came here anyway? Um hello. Well, I, yes, I just came. Wondering if there's anything left, maybe. There's nothing left. You need to wait for lunch. It won't help me. You won't help me, by the way. I'm cleaning up here. What for? What do you mean? She puffed up her lips and seemed offended. Somebody has to clean up. We do it in turns. You will have your turn as well. Thanks, but no. Okay, got it. I was going to leave, but Miku still couldn't stop. So, will you help me? Yeah, uh, let's help her. I don't know why I agreed. It happens often that you make a decision first and wonder for quite a while. Why did you say what you said? You think it again and again. And still can't figure out why on earth you did that. That's how I felt wiping the tables one after another. You know, it came up with a new song. Want me to sing it? Not eager at all. Hmm? No? She started to think. It would be hard to sing and clean at the same time. I'll sing it later then. Miku gave me a disarming smile. Yes, of course. It's so cool how you saved Shurik yesterday. The entire camp is talking about, uh, only about it since earlier this morning. I feel like just... I feel just like a hero. It was nothing much, really. No, really, I'm serious. I would never dare to go in the woods at night to so light into that whole camp. I know the rumours about it, about a camp leader who shot herself. Before, they said she'd hanged herself. And it's so scary in general. Yep. It probably is. I tried to isolate myself from external stimuli and concentrate on the cleaning. It helped me to finish sooner than I expected. And now it's done. Thanks. There was quite a bit of time until lunch, so I decided to go for a walk. I picked a random direction, which could be explained by the single word, forward. In the end, I found myself at the square. That wasn't a surprise, as the Monument of Gender appeared to be the central hub of this camp, and kind of kilometre zero. I sat on the bench and started to think. Four days have passed, and I haven't gotten even an inch closer to working out how I got here. It's true that quite a few strange things have happened during this time, but almost every one of them can be explained logically after careful thinking. Every single one of them could have happened in normal life. Normal life. This term lost its original meaning to me here. Reactions to the environment, the actions and words of other people, or my own words. Indeed, none of this here is normal. In the last four days, my worldview has taken a series of painful punches in the stomach and uppercuts which have led it to being, if not knocked out, then seriously knocked down. 
Sometimes I don't understand why I act one way or another, or say some things. Actually, I do understand, but not straight away. Such afterthoughts, however, don't help me act differently, more sanely, and appropriate to the situation at all. Moments of truth happening to me are becoming more and more rare. If only, if my only wish during the first day was getting out of here, then now my main concern was to find food, how to avoid line-up in the morning, and what to say to Olga if Alyssa complains about me. And those things are truly important to me. And day after day, daily fuss like this overshadows the thoughts in my head about how the world around me, together with this camp and these girls, are completely abnormal. But I can't do anything about myself. Besides, because I just forget. In the same way we breathe without thinking about it, I'm joining in the everyday life of the local inhabitants more and more without realising it. I'm steadily becoming an average pioneer. No! This is wrong! I shouted loud and slapped my face a few times. All of a sudden, the bell sound calling the pioneers for lunch came from the loudspeakers. Finally. I ran, skipping along to the canteen, leaving my inspiring thoughts back at the square where they could sound interesting to gender alone, and only if he was alive. The day has just started and I've gone through so many things already. But I did it and now have legitimate grounds to fill myself up. Today I wasn't the last one so I could choose a free table. Lunch included pea soup, mashed potatoes with fish. It was a major disappointment to me as I don't eat fish in any form and hence will get fewer calories than usually. Soon Slavia and Lena came to my table. Can we? She smiled nicely. Hey, yeah, oh, yeah, sure. I stood up and pulled out a chair for her. Please. I was in an excellent mood at that moment. Enjoy your meal. Saying, saying that, Lena began staring at me and continued for some time. Then, but then, after realizing how odd she looked, switched to her plate. You too. Do you have any plans for today, Semyon? No. I gave her an honest answer, as indeed I had no plans, except for searching for answers. But that was more like a global goal. Do you want to take a boat ride to the island with us? The island? Well, I think I've seen it from the pier. For what? Olga asked us to gather some strawberries. There's a lot of strawberries there and they're so delicious. I could imagine the taste without even eating it, just by looking at Slavia's face. Strawberries. And what are those for? I don't know, but it is indeed a great idea. Well, indeed it is. Moreover, I haven't been to the island yet. Yes, yeah, sure. Within minutes we were already standing at the pier. Well, here's the boat. Hang on, I'll go and fetch paddles now. I was left face to face with Lena. Do you like strawberries? Well, not really. But they're tasty. Lena smiled. I see. I didn't know what to say next, how to continue the conversation. If Slavia didn't come back, we would probably sit here until evening without saying a word. Here you go. She handed me a pair of hefty paddles, and I suddenly realised why they invited me along. Yes, thanks. We got into the boat. I untied it, pushed off the shore, and tried to start paddling. And where exactly are we heading to? Right there. She pointed her finger at the island. That island, that island is named the closest one. I wonder what captain gave it such an original name. Well, the island is indeed close to the shore. Aye aye, captain. If only I'd known what was waiting for me up ahead. And that seems like a good place to stop. I hope you've enjoyed this. 
Oh, until the next time, I have been Simon Parsons. This has been Everlasting Summer. Thank you, and good night. Thank you.